I want to get straight into what I want to share with you this morning. And I want to speak about life as a journey. And here's what happens quite often uh, with us. That when we're on a journey, obviously we have a destination. And it's important not to get stuck. And when you're driving in your car, either if you have engine trouble or whatever it might be, you could get stuck. Or <laughs> if, you, if you lost your way. Now, I don't know if it's the same here in Australia. But in South Africa, men are notorious for being unwilling to ask for directions. Is it the same here? Let me ask the ladies, because they will be honest. Okay, and I just want to tell all the ladies here, it's not because we are stubborn or proud or anything like that. The, the reason why we are unwilling to ask for directions is we actually never get lost. We sometimes like to take a different route because men are explorers. So, uh, but, but I want to speak about our spiritual journey in the sense of my past, my, my present, and my future. And it's so easy. We know we are actually existing in the present, but it is so easy in your thought life to either get stuck in the past or to have all kinds of fantasies about the future and, and live there instead of enjoying the present moment. So I want to say this to you this morning. Um, you, you have a choice. You could either be a prisoner of past, past hurts or regrets. You could become a hostage of future fantasies or even fears. Or you can become a ruler in your present circumstances. That's the choice that you have. And I want us to, to go to the scripture in, in Philippians 3, and I'm sure you've read it before. I want to use the Good News translation, and here's what Paul says. He says, I do not claim that I've already succeeded or I've already become perfect. I keep striving to win the prize for which Christ Jesus has already won me to himself. And then this is the key verse. He says, of course, my friends, I really do not think that I've already won it. The one thing I do, present tense, However, is to forget what is behind me and do my best to reach what is ahead. So I run straight toward the goal in order to win the prize, which is God's call through Christ Jesus to the life above. Now, here's what Paul says. Look at those, if you can recognize these three statements. He says, first of all, I forget the past. I leave it behind me. Uh, that's important. Then he says, right now, there's one thing I do, and I do it to the best of my ability. That's the present. And then concerning the future, he's, he says, I'm reaching what is ahead of me. So I want to put it in three uh, different ways, I, if I could kind of paraphrase his statements. I want to speak to you about learn from the past, live in the present, and lay hold of the future. If we can base our life philosophy on that, we will not get stuck uh, in this journey. So let me start speaking about learning from the past. When Paul says in verse 13 that he's forgetting those things that are behind, we need to understand, and in, incidentally, the book of Philippians was one of the, the uh, uh, last books that, that Paul wrote uh, while he was here on earth. And we, we need to remember that it wasn't because he was old and was suffering from amnesia that he said, I'm forgetting the things of the past. This was deliberate forgetfulness. And sometimes we need to make a decision in our mind that we must practice deliberate amnesia. I remember hearing Kenneth Hagin saying these words. He said, there are some places that I do not visit in my mind. And you should put a no entry sign on some things in your thought life and say, I'm not going there. And this is what Paul says. He says, I forget the things of the past. Now, in the Old Testament, I found this, um, these words of God to Israel, echoing what, what Paul says in the New Testament in Isaiah 43, uh, verses 18 and 19. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to read it to you. It won't be on the screen. God says, forget the former things. 
Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? He says, I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Wow. God is a God of new beginnings, of new and fresh things. Now, I, I got a little bit confused when I read just a few chapters on in, in chapter 46. It seems like God is contradicting himself because in verse 9, he says, Remember the things I've done in the past, for I alone am God. <laughs> And, 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 and I thought about this for a moment. What does God want to do? For, must we forget or must we remember? And again, I want to say this. We need to deliberately practice selected amnesia. Because here's what God says. Forget everything else, but remember what I have done. There are some precious things that I need to hold on to in my past. Never let go of God's involvement in your life. Recall those things because that's the foundation that you build on. There are some things in my past that I, I must remember. Joshua, let me give you some good advice here. Never forget October, your wedding anniversary. <laughs> it could be dangerous. <laughs> so certain things you have to remember and, and, and you have to recall. And it's, it's not bad uh, to every now and then uh, go, as, as the expression says, down memory lane and just appreciate those things that, that God did for us. So don't ever forget the dear people that God put in your life. I'm so thankful, and let, let me say this genuinely, I'm so thankful for the people that God put in my life. I really don't take it lightly. I believe there are what I would call God connections. And, and never allow um, those relationships to, to become strained and for you to be um, far from, from those people. There are significant events in your life that you must always hold on to and, and recall. There are precious memories. But forget the things that become big burdens and bondage in your life. Leave those things behind. You see, when you go on a holiday and you've had a great time, you come home and what do you do? You unpack your bags. You wash your dirty laundry. You don't take your dirty washing to the office. But some people drag the baggage of their past into their future with all the dirty laundry. And those are the things that we need to leave behind and, and, and uh, forget. Talking about forget, we for forgot to tell you that this is actually a funeral service. I forgot to tell you about that because today we are going to bury the mistakes of the past and leave them here. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to read a, a, a quote to you by um, a man called Thomas Dexter Jakes, better known as T.D. Jakes, American preacher. And I love what he says here. He says, you cannot spend your life in the graveyard of guilt. Dealing with the corpses of the past. Know when things are dead. Know when to release them and bury them. If you continue to work with the dry bones of dead issues, you too will begin to decay. No amount of work will resuscitate a corpse. Sign the death certificate and bury the past. Wow, that's good advice. We need to bury the past. With all my mistakes, with all my failures, and incidentally, talking about failure, here's what we need to, to realize. Failure is an incident, not an individual. Failure is an event, not a person. The fact is, all of us fail from time to time. That doesn't make you a failure. Amen. And we need to go beyond those things and see, uh, let me forget past hurts and failures. Let me uh, uh, release unhealthy relationships, broken dreams, old methods, unproductive traditions, griefs and, and grievances. Darren, I need your help here. Please come up because I'm looking for somebody that it's quite handsome, so there. 
<clears throat> just stand here for a moment. There's an expression in English that says, you hold a grudge against someone. Now say I listed all my grudges against Darren on my smartphone. Here's what I have to do. I hold my grudge against him. When he starts walking, what do I have to do? In order to keep on holding the grudge against him, I have to follow him. You can turn around now, otherwise we're heading for the door. <laughs> so here's what I want you to see. The moment I release him, I am liberated. Thanks, Derek. <laughs> and so often we hold on to unforgiveness, to grudges, to bitterness, and God says, let it go. I think there's a song in that. <laughs> we have to release these things. Wow. <laughs> I love quoting all kinds of people. So, Learn from the past, but then leave the past. Don't live in the past, live in the present. So let me, let me say, it's okay to go down memory lane occasionally, but don't get lost in the neighborhood of nostalgia. Don't become a permanent resident in the region of reminiscence. Just make a U-turn. And it's legal here in Australia. See. And you can do U-turns everywhere. So live in the present. That's the second thing we want to focus on. Don't live life in reverse. Paul says in, in verse 13, he says, there's one thing I do. And he says, I'm doing my best. He says, I'm giving uh, all my attention to this. That's the single most important thing that, that I'm doing. You see, when God introduced himself to Moses, he said to him, my name is I am. God is not I was. Although he was, is and always will be. But God is the God of, of the present. Let me quote um, from the book of, uh, of Julio in the Bible. Julio Ecclesiastes. You know, Julio Ecclesiastes. Hey. This is wise, wise Solomon, Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. He says, there's an opportune time to do things, a right time for everything on the earth. We need to become sensitive to the now moment in our lives. I know not many of you are interested in rugby. I found that at last night I was the only one that knew anything about the game when I tried to watch it. But in rugby, you have, um, you have players in the back line and you have forwards. And the forward, they bulky guys. I'm saying this with great respect. You don't need to think much. Let me put it lightly. <laughs> All you need is you need, you don't need brains, you need brawn. You need to be able to push. And I was privileged at one time to uh, conduct a Bible study for our national rugby team. And I was quite surprised when one day, one of the, uh, one of the forwards texted me, texted me, and he, this was a very profound message. So it surprised me. <laughs> and here's what he said. I won't say it close to him. I would not dare to say that. But here's what he said. Listen to, to these words. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. I just checked whether it came from the, the right person. Let me say it again. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. God sometimes opens a great door for you, but that door doesn't stay open. You have to walk through that door while the opportunity is right. You have to uh, be sensitive to the now moment. In, in Ecclesiastes, let me quote uh, uh, Solomon again, chapter 7, verse 10. He says this, Do not say, why were the old days better than these? 
I I often hear people speak about the good old days. And then Solomon continues, he says, it is not wise or because of wisdom that you ask this. If I can put it in plain and simple language, Solomon says, you stupid (laughs) if you do this. That's what he says. You know, if you always speak about the good old days, you driving your car and you're looking in the rearview mirror all the time. That's what you're doing. You've, you, you're focused on, on things behind you. Don't always look back. I heard somebody put it this way. They said, don't stumble over something behind you. Because if you stumble over something behind you, it means you're going backwards. Don't look back. Remember Mrs. Lot? What happened to her when she looked back? She turned into a pillar of salt. In South Africa, we have these taxis. Uh, Traffic rules don't apply to them. And there was a taxi driver who looked back and he turned into a telephone pole. (laughs) So looking back is is dangerous. Let me, let me, uh, listen to this. This is so beautiful. I read this somewhere. It says this. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Today is a gift. That is why it's called the present. Wow. God has a present for you every day. You need to, to, to be aware of that. God has something new and God has something uh, fresh for you. Uh, I, I want to quote from the book called Lamentations. Can anything good come out of that? Yes. In Lamentations 3, verses 22 and 23, go and read it. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of paraphrase it. Here's what Jeremiah says. He says, the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. And when I read that scripture, I, I kind of got this picture in my mind. Darren, you'll have to go and Google this because you have no idea what I'm talking about now. The milkman. Any, did you have milkmen here? Many years ago. You didn't have to go to the store or the shop to buy milk. He came and delivered it on your doorstep every day. Doesn't matter what the weather was, hail, rain, snow, the milkman would come and deliver fresh milk on your doorstep. Great is his faithfulness. (laughs) And this is exactly the picture that I saw here where it says, the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Don't go on last week's sour mercies. God has something new and fresh for you for this moment. I want to quote a Roman poet. He wasn't even a Christian. He, he lived uh, uh, some years before Christ. Uh, in, in English, we call him Horace, but his, his real name was Quintus. Uh, Quintus Horatius Flaccus. And his famous two-word Latin quote is shorter than his name. And you might have seen this. And he said these words, carpe diem, seize the day. There's a moment that you need to grab hold of. And the Bible speaks about that. It says, now is the time of God's favor. Today is the day of of God's salvation. Now is the opportunity. Make use of that. And don't get stuck in your past. I I read this beautiful story by Dwight L. Moody. He was an evangelical preacher. And he tells a story of two men who had something to celebrate. They lived uh, on a bay. And the pub where they needed to go celebrate was on the other side of the bay. So they had a little rowing boat. So they rowed to the other side of the bay, got there, celebrated a little bit too much. It got late. It was a foggy night. They decided it's time to go home and then found their way to the harbor, found the little boat, got in and started rowing and rowing and rowing. And they had a fair idea of where they should go, but they just couldn't reach the shore on the other side. Eventually, out of exhaustion, both of them fell asleep. And when they woke up, when the sun rose, they realized why they 
didn't reach the other side. They forgot to untie the rope. (laughs) And you know, here's what many of us do. We actually have our boat of our life tied to the, uh, the dock of days gone by, to the pier of yesteryear. And we're not getting anywhere. This morning, I tell you what we're going to do. We're not just going to untie the rope. We're going to cut that rope. And we're going to get to where God wants us to be. And here's the important thing. When you speak about these things, we need to realize we need to take it one day at a time. Jesus uh, said this when he taught his disciples and us to pray. He taught them to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Not give us our weekly bread, our monthly bread, because the just shall live by faith. And sometimes we have to take it day by day. I'm scared to tell the story, but I'm going to do it in any case. When I was small, or smaller, (laughs) or younger, (laughs) uh, I was still in, in primary school. Uh, kind of at the end of primary school, and there was a, a bus tour that we could go on to. And I don't know how my mother got the money together, but she sent me on this tour, and she gave me strict instructions. She said, everything's provided, all the meals, uh, so you don't need anything. I'm just going to pack your clothes. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it layer by layer, one layer for every day. She says, and here's a laundry bag. Put your dirty clothing in the laundry bag, And then next day, take the next layer. I'll make it easy for you. I listened to what she said. I took the first day, the first layer, the second day, second. When I took the second layer, she had some goodies uh, in between the layers. I I didn't need anything. Everything was provided. But it would just shared, for me, she shared love and thoughtfulness with me. I was so tempted. <clears throat> but I decided to be obedient and to just take it day by day. And it was beautiful because a few days later, there was something else there. And here's what I want you to see in this. God loves you so much. And he's already packed the bag of your destiny. There's a layer for every day. <laughs> Daily bread. And then here's the beautiful thing. Sometimes God surprises you with a bonus, with something you never even asked for. I love unpacking my destiny with God. And that's what God wants you to do. Live in the now moment and enjoy what God has for you. Here's what Jesus also said. Good advice, Matthew 6, 33. Don't worry about tomorrow. Trust God day by day. He says uh, uh, that tomorrow will will take care of itself. If you you really read it in his context, it says God will take care of tomorrow. So maybe you'll remember it when I say it this way. Don't borrow sorrow from tomorrow. (laughs) Live day by day and enjoy the now moment that God has for you. Keep on going. Again, you'll have to go and Google this because this is, this is old school. A rocking chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Corey ten Boom was a, was a well-known uh, evangelist and humanitarian in the Second World War. And she made this statement about a rocking chair. She says, when you sit on a rocking chair, it gives you something to do. She says, and worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but you don't get anywhere. (laughs) And and quite, quite often, our minds are occupied with worry about the future. And what we need to do is just take it day by day, step by step, keep on walking with God. I want to quote somebody. I don't know whether you're familiar with this person, and maybe this is not the most appropriate person to be quoted in church. Johnny Walker. (laughs) 
What did Johnny Walker say? Keep walking. (laughs) It's still true. He might have said it in the wrong spirit. (laughs) But it's still true. Keep walking. (laughs) Keep going. Wow. Okay, so it is important to uh, uh, live in the present, but then to lay hold of the future. And Philippians 3, Paul says this, he says, I keep striving, I keep reaching, I keep running this race. And here's what each and every one of us should do from time to time. Locate yourself, ask yourself, where am I right now in the race, in the journey of my life? And then don't get stuck there. Realize that you have not arrived yet, that God has has something great for your future. You might have had good old days, but God has better days. I like what the Bible says about the righteous. It says the path of the righteous that keep on growing brighter and brighter until the end. That's what I expect from God. And thank God for, for, for better days. And here's what I find sometimes even amongst believers, that they have all these spiritual experiences. And I often compare it with a, with a train ride with different stations. And you have the new birth. That's the start of the, of the ride. You have maybe water baptism. You have the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You have all kinds of spiritual experience. But don't get off at that station. The train is moving along. God wants to take you further. He has a future for you. And lay hold of that future. Don't become comfortable where you are. You must have a vision for the future. Helen Keller was a famous American author and speaker. And she lost her sight and her hearing before she was two years of age. Became, uh, as I said, famous. And she said this, the greatest tragedy in life is people who have sight, but no vision. If you don't have a vision for the future, you'll get stuck. Al Bernard, an American preacher, uh, put it this way. If you do not have a vision for the future, then your future is threatened to be a repeat of your past. We must have a vision for the future. I want to conclude with, um, with a challenging prayer. This is not a comfortable prayer. But maybe sometimes it's necessary for the Holy Spirit not to just comfort the afflicted, but to afflict the comfortable. <laughs> and this prayer is attributed to Sir Francis Drake, um, lived in the 16th century and became the first Englishman to sail around the world. So he was a man of great courage, of great vision. And I've adapted that prayer a little bit. And I just want, I want to read just two of the, the stanzas in, in this prayer. And as I said, it's not a comfortable prayer. Disturb us, O Lord, when we are too pleased with ourselves. When our dreams have come true, because we have dreamed too little. When we arrive safe and sound, because we sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, O Lord, to dare more bravely and boldly to venture on wider seas where storms will show your mastery. Where losing sight of land We shall find the stars. (laughs) Push further the horizons of our hopes forward into the future with courage, strength and love. Are you ready to be disturbed? Learn from the past, live in the present and lay hold of your future in God.